we pray that you will be pleased to dwell in this house of prayer and to fill it with your divine presence. O King of kings and Lord of lords, we pray that this church will be a visible sign to a fallen world of your presence among us, a place where souls will come to behold the Lamb of God. May countless souls find a haven from the turmoil of the world. May hungry souls come to be fed the bread of life. May weary and burdened souls come to find rest. May contrite and penitent souls come to receive your great mercy. Relying solely on your loving providence, we seek only to produce a church according to your will. And we beg of you the grace and continual assistance so that it may be accomplished. May our patron, St. John the Evangelist, intercede for us, strengthen us, and protect us in this effort. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Father. This process uh, started uh, back in May of 2019, I think, with the first town hall, at which time uh, Father asked to uh, submit names who wanted to be on the building committee. Uh, he had uh, talked to me, and uh, one of the first questions I asked him was, uh, what's the purpose of this committee, and is this a dictatorship, or a democracy, or what, you know, what, what, what can we expect? And he said, I want to build a consensus. And I said, that's great, because that's what it needs to be. So uh, there were 60 names submitted, uh, approximately 35 accepted uh, their nomination. Uh, I was appointed as a, as a chair. And uh, we sat down and went over uh, the list, uh, and we wanted to keep a diversity on the building committee uh, with the men and women, uh, and also uh, the, the ones uh, like Wayne has been here forever, and, and the other ones who have come uh, on here. And we wanted to, wanted also them to have uh, the desire to build a consensus, to dedicate the time that it's gonna take, because these meetings sometimes last a lot longer than I want to, but they do. And uh, so that, that there's a commitment that was required uh, from them uh, to do that. Uh, and, um, and again, the, the uh, diversity and the willingness to come to a consensus was the main drive uh, in there, and uh, graciously the ones that have uh, are up here now have accepted that. Uh, so uh, what we'll do is go ahead and uh, let everyone introduce themselves. Jamie. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming. I'm Jamie Buck. Um, we joined my husband David and I and our two small young children at the time were girls. We joined the church when we moved to Clearwater in 1999, so about 21 years ago. About seven years ago, we moved to the very far west side of Wichita, um, but we chose to stay at St. John's because we love this parish. Um, this is our home. It's our family parish, and um, I hope to be here for the rest of my life. I'm Juliana Handy. My husband and I joined this parish about uh, nine years ago. Um, we weren't, well, I'm not from the area, and he wasn't Catholic, so we kind of went around to the different parishes to um, find a parish that would fit us, and we found St. John and just loved it here. We liked the community, we liked um, how welcoming it was, so we decided that this was gonna be the, we wanted to find a place that we could raise our children and feel like we could stay here for a very long time, and um, we're currently looking for a home, and one of our biggest deciding factors is being able to stay in the um, St. John's area. Um, so we plan on raising our children here and being here for quite a long time. Thank you, as I mentioned, I'm Don Flossmeyer, and I was, I was raised uh, just a few miles from here, around 55th Street, 119th Street West, and was a member of uh, uh, Schulte, uh, play ball with a few of them, Richard, and, and uh, 
few of the other guys that were here, Jack, uh, way back when. Uh, and I, I tell people I'm a recovering Schultzian. And uh, really, uh, when we moved, when uh, my wife Meryl and I moved back here, uh, we had talked about Schulte, and I, I said, well, it's not the same church that I went to when, when I was growing up, and we had just left St. Elizabeth, uh, which was a pretty big parish, and I really wanted to get to the smaller parish, and this seemed, and, uh, seemed like and is a, a perfect fit for us, so we're real happy to uh, be part of this community. Well, I'm Jason Martin, and uh, I, too, at this time in my life, was in Trophy, and uh, went to grade school there for eight years. And uh, about 2013 or 2014, my wife and I and the kids uh, came to St. John's, and uh, it was just a time for us to um, kind of get back to our roots. My grandmother had my church here for years, and uh, until she passed away, and my dad attended grade school here. So a lot of close ties to this to this parish, and, and we continue to, to to keep that tradition. So my wife and the kids plan on staying for quite some time as well. I'm Brenda Rounds. I am new to the committee. I've only been here a couple of um, months. I took the actual Solomon's um, place when we lost her. Um, my husband and I got married um, while we lived in the area, actually, for um, a long time. We were both five minutes from here, and once we got married, uh, we moved to Schulte, and we were there for a period of time. I moved back out here and have been parishioners for about 15 to 18 years. Um, we have five children, um, a granddaughter, and a grandson on the way. I'm Father Joe. I'm Father Joe. Wow. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm your pastor. Wing. I'm Wayne Youngers. Uh, been here my whole life. Uh, my father was here his whole life, and our family was raised right down the road here. Uh, I have seven children, and uh, we. Uh, my wife was from Garden Point. So we, uh, now I remember this parish since we've been married. And I do have daughters. I got daughter, doctor. That's it, kind of a joke now because I called her daughter in law at the last meeting. <laughs> <laughs> but she is my daughter and is a member of this parish too. So we have other families and long time ties. I've been um, seen a lot in the parish over the years. Uh, I went to school in the uh, Old school that was set right here where this parish center is. Uh, I was on the building committee when we built this parish center and, and took down the old school. Um, and so uh, just have a lot of good memories and uh, long time parishioner. All right, thank, thanks for coming tonight. And, um, my name is Brian Zimmerman. Um, been going here about 10 years. I was lucky enough to meet Rose Moss and lucky enough again that she wanted to go to this parish and we chose that. So uh, we now have five children and uh, we really feel like this is a good parish to be at and blessed that we're here. Uh, a nice sense of community um, and look forward to many more years being here. So. And also would like to acknowledge Angela uh, Solomon, who was part of the uh, building committee here. And, uh, and I'm sure that you've seen her around when uh, she was here in the wheelchair and stuff. And she opened up, uh, certainly my eyes, and I'm sure, sure on the committee, a bunch of eyes on the needs uh, of the handicapped and things that we take for granted uh, that she had to struggle with. And she was so uh, gracious that she didn't really know she was struggling with a lot of times and or else she didn't pay attention i guess in my case but but uh it, it uh, really added uh, a flavor to the uh, committee that needed to be here uh, from a standpoint of being inclusive on people uh, that don't have the same capabilities that we have we're very blessed to, 
to have that and, and you know this is you know it may be temporary we, some, something could happen to us uh, tomorrow that we would need be in the same situation and how would we handle that if we want to go to confession or be part of the choir upstairs or be a lector or anything else that uh, she had the limitations that she just could not do uh, that wanted to do she had a desire to do that so her contribution was uh, very valuable here uh, the architect uh, that we had chosen, we interviewed four uh, people, uh, and uh, Randy Crook, uh, he's a member of Blessed Sacrament Parish out there, has experience, he's working on the St. Rose uh, Mount Vernon Church. Uh, he understands uh, the Catholic uh, terminology uh, and the priestly terminology, which I'm learning, uh, and his willingness uh, to work with our community to help incorporate in the designs that we were doing, whether it was a renovation uh, or uh, a new church, to work with the design of our community, not to uh, rubber stamp something that you know came from someplace else, but we tried to uh, put that feeling, of the Clonmel feeling, in for what we were doing. Uh, you know, everybody thinks they're unique, and we are. Uh, so we want to keep that uh, uniqueness that we have uh, and it was important on that and Randy fit the bill for that. Again on the on the decision making on the uh, the committee uh, it was uh, the, the process everyone had come in uh, with an idea you know of what they thought should be done or what they hoped would be done or whatever and as we formulated the committee and as it uh, progressed and uh, the architect was not a part of it at the beginning uh, i don't remember uh, what about the fourth or fifth month i think before we ever had one come in uh, to do it but we had to kind of uh, eliminate some things that uh, to, to kind of narrow things down and the practicality of it uh, we looked at option uh, a uh, on there that am my jumping ahead too far the, uh, at the first uh, town hall, uh, we were asked uh, to identify the needs that we uh, wanted. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the, the needs were uh, definitely uh, kind of personal in some cases. Uh, the pews were definitely a, a majority of the problems there uh, on the existing church. And the repairs that needed to be done, and of course the ADA uh, accessibility, uh, one of the things that uh, you remember that we added uh, that front uh, ramp on there and we've got a automatic into the front uh, into the um, uh, waiting area there or the uh, gathering area uh, but then there's you got to open the doors to get into the other area of, of something there so it was something that yeah we got her, we got her into the, uh, the church but we didn't get her into the nave <laughs> so, so you know just things that uh, need to be done uh, and of course, there's a lot of the flooring and uh, lighting and so on. Everything kind of needs to be updated on the, uh, uh, the existing church there. Uh, the altar width, uh, I have the privilege of when Father's out of town to uh, expose the sacrament. And I go up there on that altar, and it, it is pretty small. And I've been watching other priests that come and the way they put their book and everything else and uh, you know until father quite honestly until father pointed out it it never occurred to me but then you watch somebody else up there a new priest that comes uh substitute priest and you, you can see their cautiousness up there and uh just trying to uh, redo some of the things that we have up there to uh beautify it uh, to to give the uh, the glory to God in the in the way that uh, uh, He is deserving, and uh, the one of the things that came up quite often was the Adoration Chapel, uh, and uh, I have been at parishes. Uh, St. Lucas was one that had a, uh, a separate one, and when they built that church, we went into just a room to have uh, adoration uh, and stuff. And, and the closeness that you have in a confined area, I really like. It's not for everybody, but that's. I, I did like it, so uh, Adoration Chapel uh, was one of the things that was requested. Uh, the expansion, this expansion of the parish center, uh, which uh, you know we're very fortunate here uh, to have the involvement of the younger kids. Uh, 
uh, that we have. And uh, well, I understand that I don't have younger kids anymore, but uh, the uh, I guess it's full here. It's kind of overflowing. And I know Sandy always complains about the kitchen. And so, <laughs> so, so we're trying to we're trying to address all those needs of additional classroom space and and so on there. And so uh, it, it, we looked at everything uh, to get, to begin with. And uh, and I, I will say that I was out of town uh, in Washington with my uh, daughter and, and son-in-law. And uh, option A was eliminated. And I agree wholeheartedly with that because I, I just never saw us accomplishing with the existing building, trying to renovate everything that we needed in there uh, to, to you know, what would we have left type of thing. And, and are we just putting a Band-Aid on something for a few more years until somebody else comes along and says, yeah, we need to do this. Um, and then option B and uh, option C, and I'll, I'm gonna let Wayne uh, address the option B here. Um, as we looked at the different options, like Don said, you know, option A we eliminated. From the perspective of looking at what we were charged to do is look at the parish for three generations forward or 90, years forward, I say 100 to 90 years. And what are the needs of it through that time? And so that was really the charge of what we were doing. And as we looked at the eliminating the option A, it was pretty obvious that just putting in new carpet or spacing the pews a little bit and doing a few things in there would not accommodate us for that many years forward. And so uh, looking at option B, and there were several of us on the committee and everybody even had thoughts of, well, let's renovate the church in a bigger way, add on to it, add to the structure, and we can do what we need to do. So we seriously considered that, and there was many of us seriously on that page. And so we had the architect uh, draw out the different options of what we could do, start looking at what could we do to add to the existing structure and uh, try to accommodate more people. And as we did this, you can see at the top, you know, the number of seats we could add for option A, option B, and option C. And there's two more options on the next page, leave it right here. Well, there you go, for a little bit. We'll show you that in a second. But, um, as you can see in all three of these, um, on the first one, I think we were destroying two walls to a degree or breaking into them. And uh, then to extend the church length, which is on this there, we actually have three walls of the church destroyed. And when you start looking at that structure and say, we're gonna destroy three walls. Um, and then also the shaded areas is where we would have pillars which would have blocked eyesight. The pillars are not a strong option for anybody in today's world. And then the length of the church, if you made it longer by just breaking out the end, you start having to raise the altar to have visibility clear back. So all these things start playing into our thought process. And I'm gonna start answering some of the questions we received at the previous meeting as we go through this, that they didn't get at uh, the previous one. And it, and it was asked again, what's the cost, what's the cost? We don't truly know a cost without going out and quoting something like this, but we could have easily dumped in a million to $2 million in this church. And we're also told that you will not get a firm contract on remodeling of this church because of all the things they could run into and not know what, what you're gonna get into. So uh, with that, uh, we start it started becoming obvious through the thought process and through, again, people have asked how did you get to the decisions where you were, and it was the Holy Spirit, because we didn't start out thinking this is where we was going to end up where we had. The Holy Spirit was in, in this process, or if it was up to my mind alone, I don't think we would have been here, but I know through the guidance of the architect and the committee and the Holy Spirit that we're moving in the right direction. But I'm gonna let Jason follow up with on these a little bit on the additions, kind of his thoughts. 
Right. Um, uh, just to recap on what Wayne said, I think the majority of there was quite a few of us that that also too thought that that the that the best decision to make was to to renovate and remodel. <clears throat> but um, just as he had said, you know, trying to tie an old structure to something, trying to tie new in an old structure has its challenges. And of course, that's what the architect also told us is, you know, trying to get a firm number on that is just very, very tough to do. And, and it doesn't really check off all the boxes of all of our needs and to, and to make sure that we can accommodate all the things that we, that we did in our, in our that we, the, uh, let me go back, our, uh, in our, in our feedback forms, didn't really check off all the boxes that we needed to do to go forward for the next 90 years, uh, three generations or 100. Um, and as Wayne had mentioned, the line of sight, you know, like in this particular one here, there were almost 64 of them that, that, are, that were instructed to view the altar. Um, and then not only that, on this option here, if we, if we widened out the sides of the church, it got very, very, very close to the, to the rectory. And so we would be limited there as well. Um, and, and, as a, and as a hard decision as it was to make, um, to, to kind of somewhat rule that out, um, that was ultimately kind of the right decision at, at the time. So, anything else? Mike? Ross? And I'll, I'll follow up a little bit on that. That was, uh, the, there were quite a few meetings uh, on that renovation. I mean, a, a lot of them before they finally decided that uh, probably the best uh, course is to uh, build, uh, which was option C. And, uh, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Jamie will uh, kind of update you here what, what uh, Bishop Kemi had uh, told us on this. So we did receive some feedback and some comments from Bishop Kenny, very positive about our parish. Um, in May, he wrote, my thought is that a new church, so challenging for the current parishioners, could also be very exciting for present and succeeding generations. Something else he commented on that's not up on the slide is that he personally questioned putting hundreds of thousands of dollars into renovations and repairs of a church that is over 75 years old. Um, he also commented again in July about our parish and how many times he's been here, what a dynamic parish we have, um, a lot of young families, a lot of children, committed parishioners, all good things, all great things about this parish. Feels we have a very bright future here at St. John's. Bishop Kenny also stated the church itself must be the center of parish life, the one that just not gathers and holds the people adequately, but also serves as a visible reminder of God's Eucharistic presence in the area. Um, and finally, on to the next slide, Cassie. <laughs> we keep forgetting to tell Cassie to forward on to the next slide, so I'm trying to do that here. Um, our current bishop is supportive of St. John's and encourages us to be a viable and welcoming parish to those who will come over the next three generations. Which brought us to the church location. Uh, there was talk of putting it in where, where the existing church is. One of the things about uh, desire not to do that was the use of the church during any type of building project. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think it's critical to keep the flow and the people coming uh, to the church here. You know, if, you, if we renovate, uh, it's one of the things that wasn't said was if we renovate it, you're down for a year, year and a half, two years, or however long it takes to renovate the, the church. So you uh, make shift, which would probably be someplace in here or whatever. And I don't know if many of you have been, uh, yeah, masses in places like this, but they're not real comfortable. I've, I've done it. <laughs> and when they were doing redoing St. Elizabeth, that's where we where we were. And when we were doing redoing the bathrooms over here, uh, we have daily mass in here, and it's it's I mean it, it's mass, but it's still just not the same. 
And uh, we're, we're looking at, at what we wanted to do uh, was make a campus feeling out of this and make everything flow. Uh, and there's uh, on the Wednesdays and uh, Sundays when they have their religious ed uh, stuff, the kids come from church and the Perry Center and everything. So we wanted to have that where they didn't have to cross the parking lot because we had talked, uh, you know, uh, uh, thought of the possibility of moving to church over there or whatever. You know, that we looked at a lot of different locations uh, and uh, the schematic that uh, I think most of you have seen, I know it's in the bulletin and stuff there, that if you saw that, that how we came up with that as a way it, it flowed let future expansion for this building should that uh, be in another phase or whatever uh, and kept some green space there for us kept it close to the cemetery uh, and uh, it, it uh, minimizes the noise from k42 uh, with the, the trucks and stuff that go by there and so that uh, was one of the things that we were really concerned with <clears throat> Yeah, uh, and uh, that, uh, as I said, if we if we build it, it, it where it was now, it kind of limited some of the expansion and stuff there. So I'll, I'll let you take it. We, we kind of couldn't keep our mind and slides straight the last meeting through this, so we're going to try a little better. Um, the blue here area is, as you see here, this over view of our campus here. And that's the area between the current Perry Center and the existing church. And that was one of the areas considered uh, as to whether that was a possible future expansion area. And it would make it pretty tight to put it in there. And one of the things that did is um, eliminated the possibility of expanding this Perry Center to that direction. So go ahead and turn, Cassie. Area west of the Cosmo Hall was eliminated due to safety concerns with the parking lot between the church. And that's what uh, Jim or Don was just talking about. The blue area there is like the ball field out there or, or out past the Gaga Kennedy. And we eliminated that because if you built a church there, one just doesn't make sense there, but two, if you had kids coming out and going across the parking lot all the time, it's just not an ideal situation. And plus it, it put it close to the community hall down there. Um, your building committee desire to build while maintaining the use of the current church. This eliminates the use issue of not having the church for masses. Uh, other areas also considered to eliminate due to distance, the cemetery distance, parish center, parking concerns, or property not currently owned by the parish. Uh, we do own property back behind, which is now for uh, cemetery expansion. Somebody did recommend that we look at that for an area to put the church. So this slide shows that that is, it was an area of concern, but it just, again, it would not make sense to have everybody pass through the cemetery to go to church to go to religious education or anything. The property out to the east here, uh, which the parish does own, it's in crops right now, but the parish does own that property right there. And uh, we looked at the possibility of a church somewhere in that area. Again, it's a long distance from uh, the cemetery, just the logistics to it, to the parish center. Um, it just didn't make a lot of sense there. Um, and you may hear it, it was brought up at the last meeting, and I'll bring it up here again, that L.C. Stephens was the previous owner of that property and donated it for consideration as an area for the church. But as a committee, we decided that uh, it was not the best use for that property. Uh, the other, this is just an outlying property that is owned by the Clondell Community Club down there. The area in red is not owned by St. John Clonmel Parish. It is the private club that owns that. Uh, other things, and you can take this as you want. Uh, the parish offices are planned as a separate building and located adjacent to the new church. This is the parish offices is something that um, was also high on the list of uh, needs. And some things say, wants and needs, what's wanted, what's needed out of this project. That is really a need. 
I think we're all very aware of uh, the situation with the church and its uh, uh, desire to have all parish offices and priest residents totally separated, and that is a need of this parish. So that was highly considered. Um, and then relocating the rectory, and, and again, you guys have seen the plot of where the current church uh, or the new church desire would be, and uh, it would require uh, removing the existing rectory where it's at. And that's a little bit of a hard one to swallow, but when you see it as a master plan, it makes sense, um, and it would allow us to put a church up and maintain our current church for the full time of new construction and we could go to the current church all the way through the new construction of the new building. And so our, we believe the master plan like uh, checked off a lot that we, as we designed it, checked off a lot of boxes of what the needs of this parish are. Um, and some say it is a new church a want or a need, and we claim it as a need for evangelization of everyone and for 90 years of evangelization. Um, yeah. I just want to uh, say a couple things on the relocation of the uh, rectory there. Uh, the rectory, at, uh, the way it is right now, is basically three purpose. Uh, it's father's living residence, it's an office, and it's also a storage facility. Uh, and uh, you can imagine uh, and it, it happens with people going up and down that stairs any time of day, quite honestly. And uh, it, it's it kind of, it would be uh, a little annoying and I don't know how you get the rest that you need when you don't know who's in your house and, and so on there. So that, and, and also it's uh, actually it's a diocesan rule. I don't know if it's a diocesan or a, a church rule or what, but that, that's not supposed to be like that anyway. They're supposed to have their own uh, living quarters. And uh, I, I say that, you know, as a, as a priest, he's on call really 24 hours a day. You know, if something happens at any time of night that needs a priest, he's on call. And I think the time uh, that he can rest, he should be resting so that he is able to answer the calls that uh, may or may not come up there yeah. that, where he'll be needed. The, um, on the, uh, on, with, with a, a, a new a church, one of the things we talked to the architect about uh, was incorporating a lot of the uh, things that we have over there into the church, the statues, the stations of the cross, uh, uh, in the cross, uh, the tabernacle, uh, different things like that to help, uh, you know, continuity of, the, of that so that it doesn't, uh, uh, you know, I, I, none of us wanted a monstrosity there. We wanted something that really reflected the community and looked like a, uh, a small town church, not a, um, you know, I, I don't know if you've seen St. Catherine's out there, a beautiful church, and very, very beautiful, but that's not what we were after. Uh, we were wanting something that really reflect our attitudes uh, at the, uh, the building commission, they, they were talking about uh, expansion, even we presented a, uh, a schematic of a new church and they're talking about expansion from that. And you know, we're, you know, our minds wouldn't even, even to that. And one of them brought up, uh, you know, about the people moving out here. And I, and I said, well, you're not going to have an area like it was built at Schulte, uh, simply because you don't have the infrastructure, the, mainly the sewer and so on and so forth here, uh, out there, and Jim can probably attest, attest to that uh, on the, how expensive it would be. So what you're going to have with expansion or more people moving is probably more acreage, uh, like it's kind of been happening where they uh, sell off and uh, do it in either acre, 20 acres, five acres, whatever they uh, plotted into or plotted into there. Uh, so, and most of those people, in my opinion, that move out to places like that are more like-minded like us, rather than ones that live clustered. Uh, that might, may or may not be right, but that's the way I, I think about my experience with the ones I've built for.
so we met with the building committee on the 18th, uh, or the building commission, I'm sorry, uh, the Diocese of Wichita on the 18th of September, and uh, they really liked the, they liked the plan, the master plan we came up with. Um, they uh, kind of felt a little bit intimidating in there. We were, looked like we were on the firing squad a little bit. They kind of put us on one side of the table and they were all on the other, but uh, it went really well. Uh, we were asked some hard questions, of course. Um, and some of these we may touch on when we get to the slides, but uh, they, like Don had mentioned, they had wanted to make sure that we had room for expansion. So if we did need to, if the church did need to be bigger in say 10 years, 15 years, 20, you wouldn't have to add on to the structure again, which was important. Um, and then also different parts of it that could or could not be phased in uh, so it wouldn't have to all be done at one time. Oh, and uh, also that uh, one member, and it was a father, uh, who was it? David. Father David, please. David Marshall. David Marshall. David Marshall. Yeah, said that uh, that will give glory to God and everyone driving along K42. So, and once you see the renderings of it, you'll, you'll understand why. There were uh, a couple different master plans. Uh, master plan number one, you utilize the land we already own and keeps the, the buildings in more of a, you know, more of a tight, uh, kind, of, kind of bunches them in just a little bit tighter than, than what we'd like. Uh, master plan two requires a little bit of acquisition of land directly to the west. And uh, it allows for a little bit more of expanded parking. As you can see here, uh, this this particular stuff shop slide shows everything on our existing property, which is designated by that red. Kind of getting a little bit of an echo here. You might get too close to the microphone. So out in front here too. That red line that's that's uh, that's on there right now. You can see that's our current property line. So that take that would take the the uh, the church the new church would be right up butted up along that, and there would be the parish offices, and then this is the existing parish center room now, and that could be a possible phase two or three or whatever it may be for an addition onto this building, and you can see um, where the rectory is it would be coming here off of seventy first and directly west of the Clonmel hall there. Let me show that next slide. If you look a little bit closer on this one, this, the reason by the acquisition of the property to the west, if you can kind of see, I'll show you a little bit here. Get my mouse here. Get your, yeah. You can kind of see where the existing church is, it's kind of overlaid in there. That kind of gives you a little bit of a, more of a feel of where the proximity of that would be. And you can see that the new offices would be centered about on top of uh, the existing rectory. And another thing that that does too is it allows for the new rectory to be built a little bit further to the west that gets it further from the from the clock the hall. And the master plan as we ATC shows expansion to the Perry Center, but it is not it would not be part of this current project at all. But it does allow for room for that to happen. Uh, and whether that be I think we really talked about uh, more of a or a large space for like you know if we had you know weddings or, or, or whatnot in there just be more of an open space and maybe additional classrooms and also uh, a renovated kitchen <laughs> and the location was determined by the building committee uh, to, to meet all the identified concerns and criteria, um, which it is closer to the cemetery and is not too far from the parish center. And when you see the renderings, it's, it's aesthetically pleasing and anchored on our campus and really looks and fits into the well. Uh, it also allows for movement, um, you know, from the kids after church to come over for class at night or on Sunday mornings allows for moving across the parking areas without interrupting the traffic. As you can see there, 
everything would be you know all along the sidewalks. And keeping the parish offices as close to the church allows for a little bit of um, double double use of the of the offices. So should we have a wedding for that and if the, the conference room for that inside there could be used as a, as a spot for the bride to get ready. Um, unless she decides to maybe not go through with it, maybe she could exit without having to be in the church. <laughs> That's not good on that. That shouldn't say that. Um, I've seen that happen before. <laughs> At Schulte. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's bad to say. Um, but it does allow for uh, there'll be uh, multiple uh, multiple offices in there, as long as that also a conference room, and then an office also for father, and uh, allows for a lot of extra space and storage in there as well. And then uh, this it also included a covered drop off on the church as well, so for older members of the parish. What's that? Yeah, right there right here in the yellow here. Um, for all the members of the parish, the, the weather was bad. Uh, we'd pull up there and drop them off. It was raining or snowing. Could be getting close to. Um, and then also for maybe for funeral services. So um, should the mortuary come up and pull up there and then bring, in, bring the casket in through that way as well. The new location. Uh, uh, the church will require building a new, new rectory. Um, and this this layout keeps the rectory on site as part of the campus and also allows for separation uh, for father personal living space from public spaces. Uh, and you can see there that the rectory has been don generously donated by parishioners as not part of the, of the construction process we looked at. And you can see it right there. Okay, so we compiled all the data from your feedback from the virtual town hall meeting that was presented in July. And from that, the responses were master plan number one, which is build a new church on the land currently owned. There's eight votes for that. Master plan number two, utilizing additional land west um, of what we currently own, 31 votes for that for master plan number two. Renovate and expand current um, existing church, two votes. Renovate the existing church, six votes. Do not build a new church, four votes, and no selection given. They may have provided some feedback and comments, but didn't make a selection one way or the other. There was uh, seven votes on that. Um, in addition, also compiled in the timeline. And it's at the back if you didn't pick one up on your way in and want to do that. It gives a good breakdown of everything that's happened from the town hall meeting we had in May of 2019, um, the letters, um, the announcements fathers given, dates of our building committee meetings, um, and when we made different decisions when we interviewed architects and so on and so forth. The main difference between the master plan number one and number two is that the um, uh, the offices uh, on uh, uh, master plan one would be late, done later uh, so that the existing church could stay. Uh, we won't, wouldn't have the space to build it at the same time, but we can we still could build a new church and maintain uh, the old church at that time uh, to still have our masses and stuff. So. Uh, there would have to be some temporary offices, uh, probably over here or our directory, <laughs> which wouldn't happen. But, uh, so that that's the main difference between those two. And then on the red rings and way you did a good job the first time, I think I'll let you do that again. Concept floor plan of 
what would be the, the new church and again this is not finalized but it's where we stand at this point with it um, and it's a crucifix style church and this here would be the office area over here with the number of offices the conference room in it the covered walkway to the church um, and then your uh, church with a seating capacity of uh, 350 people in that church this is your music area over here and the adoration chapel separate over here uh, right there would be a restroom with their adoration chapel uh, access to the adoration chapel through the sidewalk and parking you'll see on the next rendering is to the side of it um, the covered area for drop off and gathering space uh, will hold uh, an additional 50 by chairs we made the architect put them in there to be sure he put 70 in there so we'd have an area for 70 overflow so 50 i'm going to call it 50 so that basically this would be a 400 person church um, and i do want to mention that as we presented this to the diocesan building committee one of their first things was well how do you expand this and so they wanted us to look at that but i think it's important because a lot of the, what we hear is you know we, we don't want to become a huge 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 parish uh, we do want room for growth we need to evangelize we need more people coming here than what we have and we have to be a stable church for western southwestern Cedric county and that's what we need to look at this as but so at the same time we will have additional space for a lot of people to sit in and bring people into the church this would also be the smallest church the diocese has built in Cedric county as a new church i think we got to think of that so yes it's a stretch for us but if we can accomplish that that's a lot of what the people here want to so, anything I missed on that one? So I think, and here's the elevation views of it, uh, just from the side views. Uh, this is what it would look like from the front uh, with your steeple and your drop off, and your offices to the side. This would be your adoration chapel side and the entry door. <coughs> Here's what we're looking at at this point. Um, yeah, one of the, the tree actually can be the way this is drawn out the tree that's our big oak tree that's out there now. For those that like to say, first meeting we all said this looks strange. We told Cassie, but we realized it doesn't look too strange if you're looking at it at the angle a little bit. It looks right to you out there the way it should look. But I think this is, you know would be a beautiful thing for Plongville to have, for people to go down K-42 Highway and see that, you know, we do give glory to God here. Oh, and yes, the design's in it. Uh, excuse me. Um, Clondell uh, originated through Clondell, Ireland. And the people that came here uh, we're from Clonmel, Ireland, so we went back to some of the churches in Clonmel, Ireland and looked at them. This isn't the exact Clonmel, Ireland church that started Clonmel, Kansas, but uh, some of the Gothic design is in this was pulled from the church to that's now a, it was a Catholic church in Ireland, but it is uh, now an Anglican church. Anglican church now. But some of the design from this was pulled from the Clonmel, Ireland church on the gothic design so we got several different views here of it of the renderings um, and then that would be the campus layout showing it is if it became to fruition with the ferry center and everything what it could potentially look like through the, uh, the process here, one of the things that uh, continually uh, came up at about every meeting was communicating to uh, the public, to the parishioners, 
uh, to try to keep them in the loop as much as possible. Uh, of course, the, um, we, we didn't meet there for, uh, I think, two or three months because of the COVID thing. We actually had this meeting here. When the last meeting we had before we were shut down, we were planning on having uh, the town hall, uh, I think in April is what our uh, target was. And of course, that got all skewed uh, from the, the situations that went on. Uh, but we, you know, it was certainly a concern to us because we had heard different things that you're, you're not, uh, we didn't know this was going on, we didn't know that was going on, and so on. And I know Father put out a virtual uh, town hall uh, here a month or two ago, uh, and I don't know how many people, uh, we, we got quite a few responses on the thing, uh, but I, apparently, there, and there, there's people that just don't do the internet and things like that. And I'd encourage you, if you know anyone like that, we have a lot of form, uh, a form back there on a feedback form that we'd like people to fill out. Uh, some people don't feel comfortable about uh, talking there, uh, fill it out and let us, because it'll give us, uh, we will uh, look at everything over the, uh, uh, at the building committee meeting. Uh, and if you know someone that, you know, doesn't uh, get out or doesn't do the internet, get those forms to them if you can, or we'll get it to them as long as we know their names and we'll even pick it up from them, uh, for, from them if, uh, if need be. So, you know, we want your feedback. It's very important uh, that we build a consensus as we go. And I, I, I strongly believe uh, that this project was driven by the Holy Spirit. Uh, I don't think any of us, uh, you know, had uh, an idea on, on doing this until the Holy Spirit moved us. And as we get into it, you know, the process, uh, it, it, I, I compliment the commission uh, committee here because uh, there were definitely diff different views in there. There's never any arguments, but there was definitely some discussions and stuff on certain things that they wanted and wanted to maintain what, you know, what we've got. And we don't want to lose that because that's what makes us uh, a unique parish and uh, we've got good people here. Uh, and so we're, we work diligently to get uh, to this point. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think if you, uh, Cassie, if you can go back one there, I, I think that is a, a dynamic view. And you look at the location of the church uh, in proximity to K42. You're going to see that no matter where, which, which way you're going on K42. That's, that's going to be a welcoming site uh, from a, a, a Catholic church. And uh, that's what we want to do is honor God in this world of people denying God. We've got to promote him. And uh, I, I think this does that. Um, we, uh, I'm going to uh, skip to the next one before the feedback. Uh, and, and, and that's in the next step that uh, we have to do. Uh, because this, this is all contingent on uh, financing as we know. Uh, and we'll, uh, we'll be setting up some meetings with some people that do feasibility studies. Uh, there's a bunch of them out there uh, that we're going to try, and we are going to use uh, uh, local, when I mean local, I mean Midwestern people, might be Omaha or whatever, but they're going to be more familiar with us rather than someone from New York or Boston or, or whatever, because they don't have the same mentality that, that we have. Uh, if you've ever met anybody from there, you know that I went to school with some of them. Good people, but boy, they sure think differently. But, uh, but uh, that, that's where we'll go to the, on the feasibility study and then, uh, then to the capital campaign from there. Uh, again, we have uh, feedback forms and we're going to open them up. And we're going to open up the mic here to anyone that wants to come up and give us your thoughts or comments or questions or whatever you may have. Thank you. 